Hi everyone, it's Dr. Lindner. Let's take a look at some of the sinuses. All right, so here is a, a lateral view. And from the lateral view, we can see a few things, right? We see the external nares, we can see the inferior medial and superior concha or turbinates, the inferior middle and superior meatus. Um, right here is the uh, cribiform plate, and we know the cribiform plate is found in the ethmoid bone, and it has the uh, breakthrough of where the olfactory nerve is, which is for the sense of smell. Okay, uh, right over here is the frontal sinus. Okay, right back here is the ethmoid sinus. So uh, let's see if I can show you again from this view. Uh, sorry, the, the um, frontal sinus is here. We can look at it from this view as well. Then right here and here, that's the ethmoid. And then pretty sure I made the mistake before, so we'll correct myself now. So right here is the hypophyseal fossa and inferior to that, we'll put an S for the sphenoidal sinus. So if I go back here, here's the pituitary and then right inferior to that, I'll put an S for the sphenoidal sinus, okay? So there's a frontal sinus, an ethmoidal sinus, a sphenoidal sinus. Let's show you the maxillary sinus now. So the maxillary sinus is easier to see on this view right here where the maxilla is. From the side view, we can see it right here. And the mastoid air cells, we really can't see, but it would be right back here where the mastoid process is the mastoid air cells are here. Now, many times when you're experiencing a stuffy nose, it's not because the nasal passages are clogged with mucus, but because the nasal membranes are swollen. Why are they swollen? They're swollen in response to histamine. And now where is histamine secreted? Histamine is released by mast cells uh, during an inflammatory reaction. And we can modulate, this is just nutritional information, we can modulate mast cells with vitamin C. Vitamin C works very, very well at modulating mast cells so that they're not releasing as much histamine. So antihistamines are typically prescribed in order to reduce the swelling in the nasal passages and allow the air to pass through. The problem is long-term, it can actually lead to hypoactive thyroids because histamine is needed to stimulate the hypothalamus to release thyroid stimulating hormone. So you have the hypothalamus that releases, sorry, the hypothalamus will release thyroid releasing hormone and it goes to the pituitary. The pituitary will release thyroid stimulating hormone the thyroid stimulating hormone goes to the thyroid gland to produce T4, thyroxin, which gets converted to T3, triiodothyronine. So what is it that's telling the hypothalamus to release thyroid releasing hormone to stimulate the pituitary, to stimulate the thyroid? Well, what tells the hypothalamus to release thyroid releasing hormone is histamine. Now, Histamine needs to hit the H1 receptor on the hypothalamus. When it does, that will push out thyroid releasing hormone. Okay, that thyroid releasing hormone goes to the pituitary. The pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone will go to the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland will push out T4, which is thyroxin, which gets converted to T3, which is triiodothyronine. Most of that conversion takes place in the liver 
and it is selenium dependent. Some of it does take place in the thyroid, but not as much as the liver. So the key here is that by taking too much antihistamines for a prolonged period of time for many, many years, you can create this self-induced um, hypoactive thyroid. Okay, so be careful with that. And the function of the sinus is to clean and moisten the air. It acts as a pressure and a volume uh, reserve. And we need the sinuses to help us produce speech. And sometimes when they are filled with histamine, sometimes it'll sound like this, right? And there could be bacterial infection. Sometimes people have a sinusitis and they do have a bacterial infection in which they need uh, antibiotics to take care of that. But many times when it's uh, prolonged, it's very unlikely that they have a bacterial infection forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for years. It's that they're having an allergic reaction and it's this chronic histamine reaction, either due to their environment of what they're exposed to, breathing it in, or food-wise. Because the sinuses, uh, the airways are filled with mast cells, but it's the respiratory tract, the skin, and the digestive tract that is loaded with mast cells. So when you put a food in that you're allergic to, all of the mast cells react. They react in the digestive tract, the skin, and the respiratory tract. So when you have a histamine reaction in the nose and the respiratory tract, you get blocked and clogged. When you have a histamine reaction of the skin, you get an itchy scalp, itchy ears, itchy tush, itchy skin, red and inflamed. That's a histamine reaction. When it involves the gut, uh, you get an irritated gut. So think of chronic sinusitis, think of allergens and allergies. This is just a picture here that shows the correlation uh, between the ethmoid bone. Here's the cribriform plate that has all those little punctured holes through them in which the olfactory nerve or cranial nerve one travels right through that. This is why it's really important to have clean hands whenever touching your nose, because there's a very thin barrier, just this, this is the barrier right here between the external environment or the nose and the brain. So be very careful there. Good place to take a break. When we come back, we'll just talk about some of the external anatomy of the nose.